Everybody hates cords. They consistently get in the way, limit the distance you can be from the source device, and they're just generally a hassle. So when we can get rid of them, it's a welcome addition. The positives of a wireless lap board are clear. You get greater freedom of movement, a cleaner aesthetic, and overall a nicer package. However, there are definitely some downsides, with form often coming at the cost of function. The question for the Razer turret is this. Has it too heavily focused on making a beautiful product rather than a functional one? We'll dive deeper after this message from our sponsor. The new NZXT Air RGB fans can be daisy chained together for awesome lighting cohesion in your build with vibrant and accurate color illumination, all easily controlled through the Hue Plus via Cam software. Full details in the description below. I'm going to start off with a word about good design. Good design is not simply having an aesthetically pleasing form or having a great amount of functionality or features. Good design is the seamless integration of form and function, when the features of a product and its physical construction complement each other. When the product can look and feel great and serve the intended purpose with excellence, that's when you recognize great design. Let's do a quick refresher on lap boards. If you're not familiar, these are simply designed to make living room gaming a possibility, allowing you to use your keyboard and mouse on the couch. We've checked out two other lap boards so far, the Corsair Lapdog, which favours a bulky but uncompromising design, with a large K70 mechanical keyboard and a large accompanying price tag. The Rockart Sova, which takes some compromises but in all the right places, giving the most well-rounded and probably the best lap board on the market. And now, the turret. With the turret, Razer has obviously put a lot of thought into the appearance and feel of the product. Unfortunately, I feel like they've missed the mark when aiming at the gaming lapboard audience, instead creating a product which will only appeal to a small niche. But before I get too deep into that, let's do an overview of the turret. We'll start with the packaging, as per usual Razer nails it here. It feels like you're buying into an experience. It's nicely presented with the lapboard, mouse, dock, cables and documentation laid out cleanly. Unlike some of these lapboards, Razer includes both a mouse and keyboard. That's reflected in the 150 US dollar price tag. The lapboard and mouse dock smoothly in the charging cradle, and I have to commend Razer. This design is great as it solves two issues simultaneously, where to safely store the lapboard when not in use, and a simple method of charging. When you pull out the turret keyboard, you have a compact keyboard layout with chiclet style keys. The mouse pad is on a hinge which folds out, revealing a small surface where the accompanying mouse is intended to be used. This surface is also slightly magnetized to prevent the mouse slipping off, which is an issue that has plagued many other lapboards. The turret's small form factor is one of the main appeals, with Bluetooth function or 2.4GHz Wi-Fi, which means that you can use this with almost any device, and it's small enough you can even take it in your backpack. But of course, Razer is primarily marketing this as a lapboard intended for gaming, so that's where they really need to hit the mark. However, really, the turret is doomed from the get-go here, thanks to the mouse. The combination of a small mouse, small mouse pad, and the wireless design means there's really no way this could be good for high-intensity gaming. For any FPS titles, there's just simply not enough mouse space. Latency becomes an issue due to the long distance wireless connection, and the mouse is simply too small to be comfortable for many gamers. It'll do okay for some basic titles like Civ, but even then the grip on the bottom of the mouse makes small movements choppy. This 3500 DPI mouse really didn't impress me much, and since the mouse pad is so small, you're pretty much stuck with this one. It's really not a good gaming experience, especially compared to lap boards like the Rockat Sova or the Corsair Lapdog. The wireless experience with this mouse is also pretty choppy at times. Using the 2.4GHz band, I found that if I had the receiver plugged directly into the PC, I would get serious interference, and only by using the included extender could I get a usable result, although even then you can feel the delay when using the mouse in-game. So once you look past its pretty face, it's obvious that the Razer turret fails on its main promise of living room gaming. There is some upside though, as the turret isn't completely without purpose. If you're someone who really cares about aesthetics and just wants simple living room control for the PC, this is for you if you can justify that price tag. If you're someone who's looking for a portable mouse and keyboard combo that you can use with a variety of devices, ranging from PCs to phones, then this also may appeal to you, with the very small form factor and the Bluetooth capability. Pairing is simple and the use is reliable, with very good battery life on both the keyboard and the mouse. This is certainly a device without a proper market though. 
there'll be a select few who love it for what it is, and have a specific use case for it. However, for the majority of people spending $150 to get a gaming lapboard, the turret is going to be a major disappointment. Razer has gone for a sleek design, but in the end, they've just come up with a slightly unusable design for serious gaming, compromising key features and usability in the sake of aesthetics, instead of finding a way to blend them together seamlessly. Hopefully, they can learn from their mistakes and make a more successful turret V2, but in the meantime, I wouldn't recommend picking this one up. So, thank you for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and comment with any questions or feedback down below. I'm Aiden with Hardware Canucks, make sure to subscribe for more similar content, and we'll see you in the next one.